But um, yeah, Zach, I do want to end off with a what if here. Um, it's been a couple episodes since I've done what if the last what if I did. Um, to recap some of the last ones I did. What if James Harden stayed in Brooklyn? Um, what if the Dolphins drafted Joe Burrow? You know, if they traded up to draft him, you know, uh, what if these things happen in this year? Maybe you could do one soon about what if uh, Tom Brady would have went to Miami last offseason with Sean Payton. That's a good idea, too. I might think about doing that. That's not a bad idea. But my what if for today, and Zach, after I'm done, you could respond to this. This is actually a segment where we can dialogue this out. What if Tom Brady didn't defeat the Legion of Boom in the Super Bowl? A lot of people ask me, yo, Lil, you being the Tom Brady guy, all right, the super fan of Tom Brady, what is your favorite Super Bowl moment of Tom Brady? And the reason why this is important because he retired from football last week. The Super Bowl is around the corner. There's a lot of options to choose. Obviously, the 28-3, you know, the Super Bowl where we came back and won that game. That was very, 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 very monumental in the record books for all those reasons. You know, you talk about the one in Tampa where he went to a new team and won without Bill Belichick and nobody could use that excuse of, oh, Bill Belichick carried you. No, I'm actually a good quarterback. I'm the GOAT, right? But to me, my best moment is no doubt Tom Brady defeating the Legion of Boom in the Super Bowl. And the reason why I bring that up is because you have to realize how dominant that defense was. The Legion of Boom, they won the chip before and they were very dominant. But it's the most important one out of all them. Folks, Tom Brady lost two straight Super Bowls prior. 2007, 2012 to the Giants and didn't win a chip 10 years prior to this matchup. 10 years he went without winning the championship. If he lost this one, he his Super Bowl record would have been 3-3. Three and three, Okay, we would have questioned his legacy. How does this impact Bill Belichick's legacy? What if the... Eagles, excuse me, the Seahawks win. How are we looking at Russell Wilson's legacy? And Pete Carroll, he has two rings now. There's so much things that could have been riding in this game if it went the other way. If Malcolm Butler didn't make that interception on the one-yard line. Folks, I don't think we talk about this enough. We focus on that 28-3, to and I love that. That literally cemented Tom Brady as a GOAT. But this one right here gave him an opportunity to be cemented as a GOAT. Because had he lost this one, it would have been three straight Super Bowl losses. It would have been a, a, another Super Bowl in the last 10 years that he did not win. It was so important, and we don't take heed to that. We don't acknowledge that because we get fed a lot of stuff in the NFL. But this was so important for Tom Brady's career, and I remember that drive. I remember saying to myself, we lost the game in the final seconds of the Super Bowl against the Giants off a fluke helmet catch. I'm convinced that David Tyree had gum stuck to his helmet and he just, you know, went like that and caught the ball. And then Mario Manningham caught, you know, tiptoe up the sideline, caught that ball. We lost in dramatic ways and to lose a third Super Bowl in a row where the Seahawks is striving after we done scored a touchdown, came back down 10, 23 to 13, and we take the lead. And to see Russell Wilson drive and win the game. That would have been heartbreaking. But Malcolm Butler saved the day with that interception, leading the play perfectly, and securing Tom Brady another ring. And it jumpstart the second half of Tom Brady's dominance. Tom Brady's second half dominance is why we call him the GOAT today. So, what if Tom Brady did not beat the Legion of Doom or Boom, whatever? That's my what if. And Zach, I'm going to let you respond to that. Yeah, a lot of really good points made there, and I agree. This was Brady's most impactful Super Bowl because I think we forget, like, the uh, the Seahawks dominated the Broncos in the Super Bowl prior. That game ended as soon as the ball was snapped over Peyton Manning's head for safety uh, to start that game, and that Seahawks team was unreal. That Russell Wilson, just an elite defense, and they had a lot of chances to win that game. Of course, the ball at the one-yard line, but I think it's so interesting, like, that win literally ended the Seahawks dynasty. They would have won two Super Bowls in a row and kickstarted the next version of the Patriot dynasty, of course, winning three rings in the next five years. So I think when we look at the career of Tom Brady, like, yeah, that is definitely a turning point to me that I, I agree with. That needs to be spoken about more. There were so many 
different things that went inside and outside with that game. So many different things could have happened. And yeah, that's why the Super Bowl and these games are so important. Like, I remember exactly where I was for that game. And I do agree with you, like, in the sense that win and, and the Falcons win a, a few years later as well. Like, those were the two games that really cemented Tom Brady as the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And uh, yeah, definitely some of my best moments of football are with the Patriots and those Super Bowls for sure. Absolutely. And it goes to show you how hard these Super Bowls ought to win. You know, whether you're a team that has the talent like the Eagles and you're the favorites, quote unquote, to win the Super Bowl. I'm not sure how Vegas looks at it, but I'm pretty sure they are the favorites, the Eagles. They have the more talent. Talent doesn't always win. You know, you could argue the Legion of Boom had more talent than the Patriots. I was petrified heading into the matchup. I thought he was going to lose. And I'm a Tom Brady fan. Of course, I said we're going to win. I thought he was going to lose. I was scared of that team. What they did to Denver in the Super Bowl, Peyton Manning the year prior, and that offense was high octane. That offense was the best in the league. It was the best offense versus the best defense in that Super Bowl, Broncos and, and Seahawks, and they demolished the number one offense. So I'm saying to myself, man, I am worried. We down 23 to 13. I am worried. They are driving to win the game. I am worried. And the fact that we won the game, to me, that's the best play in the Super Bowl history. Malcolm Butler, that interception was the best play in Super Bowl history, even over the David Tyree catch. Because of what we're talking about right now and the impact and the trajectories that went either way because of it, it was the best play in Super Bowl history, no doubt about it.